Come on, kids, please try and keep up. The painting of the Treaty of Paris exhibit is in this room. Is that? No way. Mr. Bob, of course I'd run into you here. Oh, hello, Zach. Oh, hello, kids. Class, say hello to Mr. Bob. He was my history teacher when I was your age. So, how funny is it that you came to the Philadelphia Art Museum on the same day that I had a field trip scheduled? It is such a small world, Zach. It sure is. Well, I saw that the museum had, on loan, from the Winterthur Museum in Delaware, the signing of the Treaty of Paris painting for a short amount of time. And since we've been talking about the Revolutionary War a lot lately, I thought I'd come see it for myself for the first time. You know, because I'm retired and all, I got my daytime free. So this is the painting, eh? It really is unfinished. Do you know the story behind the painting and why it's unfinished? There's a pretty cool Philadelphia connection to the painting too. Philly connection? I thought this painting was painted in Paris. Yes, but the story goes... <laughs> You are listening to The World According to Mr. Bob, a historical fiction educational show based on true life events. Some sounds and language may be inappropriate. Listener discretion is advised. The day is September 3rd, 1783, at the Hotel York in the heart of Paris, France. After many months of negotiations, today is the day that both sides agree to all terms and put their names in ink. Today is signing day. The delegates from the United States are John Jay, sixth president of the Continental Congress and the first United States minister to Spain. John Adams, the first United States minister to the Netherlands. Henry Lawrence, the fifth president of the Continental Congress Ben Franklin, the first minister to France and Sweden, and his grandson and personal secretary, William Temple Franklin. Representing King George III and Great Britain are David Hartley, member of parliament, and Richard Oswald, peace commissioner for the British government. The American delegates arrived early because Franklin and his grandson have yet to pose for the official painting, depicting the signing of the treaty. The artist turns out to be a familiar friend to Ben Frank. William, are we due to pose first for the painting or are we signing the document with the British first? Because I do not see the artist or Hartley and Oswald anywhere in the room. Well, Grandpa Ben, nothing specified in the Daily Planner. I'm sure we will do whichever first. Besides, I'm sure Mr. Benjamin West will need some time to set up his paintbrushes. Mr. Adams, did you say the name Benjamin West? Yes, I did, Mr. Franklin. He has been painting the official picture of the signing of this treaty to mark this historical event. Mr. J and Mr. Lawrence have been posing for Mr. West for a couple of hours and days now. He is a very nice guy. Says he's originally from Philadelphia. Oh my word, Ben West! Do you know him, Grandpa? I do, William. I've known Benjamin for, well, it has to be at least 30 years now. I've been following him crafting his art his whole career. Ben used to stop by the print shop to buy some ink. I would give him a job. He'd name me the godfather of his second son. Wow, what a small world. It sure is, Mr. J. Well, if I remember correctly, Mr. West still has to paint the delegates from England as well. Isn't that what you remember, Mr. Adams? Yes, correct, Mr. J. Mr. West has a lot of work still to do. What timing? Oops. Oh, dear. I got I got paint all over the floor. Oh, oh, hello, everybody. Nice to see everyone again. Sorry for the ruckus. Wait, is that is that Ben? Ben! Ben. Hey, man. How you been? Why did it take so long for us to see each other over here in Europe? I feel like the last time I saw you was at dinner we had back with my wife in Philadelphia before you left on this voyage. 
Well, you finally got yourself over to Paris, didn't you? Sorry, sorry. I've, I've been painting, working for the king, you know. He keeps me busy. Johnny, what are you doing here? Hey, Cousin Ben. General Washington granted me permission to leave Rankin to get on a boat because I wanted to come and surprise you and congratulate you on a job well done with this whole war thing. When I arrived at this hotel, I saw Mr. West out front and offered him lend a hand. Hello, Johnny. My name is William. William is my grandson, Johnny. No kidding. What's that make us, like third cousin or something? Well, it's nice to meet you, William. Nice to see you again, Johnny. Hey, Adams. And uh, John Jay. I think I met you before. And I don't know you. The name's Lawrence. Henry Lawrence. Yeah, okay. Nice to meet you, too. Here, Mr. West. Let me help you set up. You know what I was just thinking, Ben? No, what is that, Benjamin? It would be wonderful if you could let me paint your portrait, Mr. Franklin. You have become such an important figure that will only age like wine over time. Oh, that would be wonderful, Mr. West. You will get some practice painting me today for the signing of the treaty painting you're currently working on. Splendid. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. And since I tend to focus on historical events for my paintings, how about we make your portrait the moment when you discovered electricity with your kite and key? I love the idea, Mr. West. Why haven't we done this earlier? You know, Mr. Franklin, sometimes you just get too wrapped up with life. I remember that night back in Philadelphia when you discovered electricity. There was such a buzz about the city over it. Although most didn't really understand what it was. Yeah, Mr. West, that was a great night. I really hope there are great advances in science with electricity. Who knows its potential right now? What is this mess? Uh, there has been a spill with the paint supplies, Mr. Hartley. Well, I'm sure someone will clean this up. And are you the artist? Yes, I am Mr. Benjamin West, and I'm the painter for the- I know who you are. I was sent here by the same person, King George III. He told me that you'd be here painting the signing. But as I told him, and I will tell you too, I refuse to pose for that painting. But, Sir Mr. Hartley, you have to. You must pose for me and this monumental event in history. I will not pose. What part of that do you not understand? I am here to sign the treaty to end the war. That is it. Mr. Hartley, please try to reconsider. This is going to be a very important painting. Mr. Franklin, the King and Great Britain just lost this war. Something that never happens. Why would I want to celebrate and have history permanently remember me with this painting? Well, Mr. West, I guess you will just have to figure something out since you already begun the painting. If Mr. Hartley doesn't want to pose for my painting, then I will just leave the British side of the signing table blank. That should send the right message. I don't give a damn what message you send, Mr. West. I am here to sign this treaty, and that's all I'm doing. Now, can we get this over with? Very well. My grandson and I will pose after we are done signing. Well, gentlemen, with my signature, the war is officially over. Wow, it really can be a small world, even back then. It's kind of funny, and also sad, with the outcomes of the treaty. Obviously, America gained its independence, but it also gained fishing rights over the Nova Scotia area. Like, why? Yeah, that fact has always baffled me, too. Yeah, so weird. And it's sad about the displacement to the West that happened to the Native American tribes. They helped so much with the war, in battle and with navigation, they really got the short end of the stick. The stick they got was microscopic, Mr. Bob. This country really treated the Native Americans very unfairly from the beginning. Is that what you're going to teach your students next? Really should be, Mr. Bob. I, I think I need to get these kids to the cafeteria. They're getting restless. Good thinking, Zach. But as usual, thanks again for the great story. It's like I'm back in your class every time. Every time I tell a story, Zach, I feel like I'm time traveling, as if it's my special power. I try to do it wherever I'm at. There's literally history everywhere you go. Good point, Mr. Bob, good point. You're a smart one. Go feed those kids. I'm off to see the rest of the museum. I can't wait to see the Van Goghs that they have here. 
and the arms and armor section is so cool. Enjoy exploring, Mr. Bob. The World According to Mr. Bob is created, written, and produced by Bob Staniszewski and Adam Staniszewski with associate producer Zach Kennedy. Recorded and mixed at Crooked Lane Sound in Cherry Hill, New Jersey by audio engineer and sound designer Adam Staniszewski. Episode number 10, the final episode of season one, is titled The Treaty of Paris. It features Craig Kaufman as Benjamin West. Mike Jensen plays David Hartley and Brett Slavin performs Ben Franklin. Mr. Bob's graphics were designed by J.R. Farrell at Promotional Graphics Doylestown, PA. The theme songs are provided by Silent Partner and Ease Jammy Jams. For a full list of character and musical credits, please check out our website, theworldaccordingtomrbob.com. And while you're on the internet, please follow our Facebook page for updates. Hit the like and subscribe button on our YouTube channel. If you want to advertise or sponsor the show, please email us at worldofmrbob at gmail.com. Or to support Mr. Bob, PayPal him at worldofmrbob. Mr. Bob would greatly appreciate it. I'm Danielle Byrne, announcer extraordinaire. Thank you for listening and please tune in to the next exciting episode of The World According to Mr. Bob. This has been a Moon Ranger production.